Yeah. Uh, to Mr. Brennan, the president kept referring to, um, well, certainly at one point he referred to him as a known terrorist. It's my understanding he was a known extremist. Was he a known terrorist? And to both of you, what was the most shocking, stunning thing uh, that you believe came out of the reviews? Um, as far as being a known terrorist, we knew that Mr. Abdelmutallab had departed from Nigeria and was in Yemen associating with extremists. This came directly from his father. So you're right. We knew from that stream of information that he was extremist and had those radical tendencies. The rest of the intelligence indicated that this plot was underway. We did not map up the two, but intelligence about this individual who was a terrorist, who was in fact a Nigerian, with Mr. Abdelmutallab. <coughs> so what we knew about him, the person, an extremist, what we knew about this other plot developing and the individual involved in that was in fact a terrorist. So he's a known alleged terrorist now after the fact, a known extremist at the time. He's a terrorist now. What was the most shocking, stunning thing that you found out of the review, and Secretary, to you as well? Um, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is an extension of Al-Qaeda core coming out of Pakistan. And in my view, it is one of the most lethal, one of the most concerning of it. The fact that they had moved forward to try to execute this attack against the homeland, I think demonstrated to us and this is what the review sort of uncovered, that we had a strategic sense of sort of where they were going, but we didn't know they had progressed to the point of actually launching individuals here. And we have taken that lesson, and so now we're all on top of it. Uh, I think following up on that, it, not just the determination of al-Qaeda and al-Qaeda Arabian Peninsula, but uh, the tactic of using an individual uh, to uh, foment an attack uh, as opposed to uh, a large conspiracy or a multi-person uh, conspiracy uh, such as we saw in 9-11. Uh, that is something that uh, affects uh, intelligence. It really emphasizes now uh, the renewed importance on how different intelligence is integrated and analyzed and threat streams are followed through. Uh, and again, it will uh, impact uh, how we continue to review the need to uh, improve airport security around the world. Tell was there an outside contractor used for security in Amsterdam? And also, what is really lacking always for us is you don't give the motivation of why they want to do us harm. I'll just take the first part and then John, we can, you can address the second. Uh, the, the screening at Schiphol Airport was uh, done by Dutch authorities, um, and uh, uh, they um, did the, the screening that was described to you earlier this afternoon. The hand luggage was, was screened, the passport was checked, uh, he went through a magnetometer, uh, but it was done by Dutch authorities. And what is the motivation? We never hear what you find out from why. Al-Qaeda is a, an organization that is dedicated to murder and wanton slaughter of innocents. What they have done over the past decade and a half, two decades, is to attract individuals like Mr. Abdelmutalla and use them for these types of attacks. He was motivated by a sense of religious sort of drive. Unfortunately, Al-Qaeda has perverted Islam and has corrupted the concept of Islam so that he's able to attract these individuals. But Al-Qaeda has the agenda of destruction and death. And you're saying it's because of religion? I'm saying it's because of an Al-Qaeda Al organization that, falls, that uses the banner of religion in a very perverse and corrupt way. Why? This is a, this is a, a long issue, but Al-Qaeda is just determined to carry out attacks here against the homeland. But you haven't explained why. Can we uh, clear up a couple of things, either one of you? First of all, what was learned while the flight was underway? There have been a couple of stories suggesting that additional information came to light after the flight took off and that uh, Mr. Abdelmutalab was going to be questioned when he arrived. That's one. So we Why don't I answer that one? Okay. Um, in uh, Schiphol, uh, his name did not appear on any terrorist uh, uh, screening watch list, uh, and so nothing pinged to keep him off of the plane. Uh, while in the air, uh, uh, Customs in Detroit uh, has access to the entire Thai database, and as we all, now all know, that's the, the, the large mega da database. It has 500,000 plus names in it. Uh, and uh, they knew he had a ping there, and so they were ready 
uh, when he landed in Detroit to question him uh, about that that uh, ping against the Tide database. Before but the terrorist you... watch list, but the terrorist watch list, terrorist screening watch list did not have his name on it. The other question is, why was the Director Leiter allowed to take leave after the incident on December 25th? I will take that issue. Um, when the incident occurred on Christmas Day, a number of people came in to, the, to the, their offices and um, focused on it immediately. I was in constant contact with Mike Leiter throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening. Mike Leiter raised with me that he was, in fact, scheduled to go on uh, leave to, to meet his, his son. And he asked me whether or not he should cancel that trip. I asked Mike about whether or not he had a full complement of folks and his deputies were going to be in place. Mike said he did. And I said, Mike, no. You deserve this vacation. Vacation, you need to be with your son. So I was the one who told him he should go out there. The events that took place on December 25th, our review has looked at what transpired before then. Since then, I think we have all sort of recognized that the, the government, the intelligence community, the Homeland Security community has worked seamlessly well. And we were in constant contact with one another throughout the period than the week after the attack. Since the, yeah. um, first question, when did we first, for Mr. Brennan, when did we first know that AQAP had intentions to strike the U.S. homeland? How early? In the in intelligence that we have acquired, over the past several years, it's been rather aspirational. It has said things. It has promoted a certain view as far as bringing the fight to us. But all of their activities, at least that we were focused on, were happening in Yemen. They carried out attacks against Prince Mohammed bin Nayef in Saudi Arabia, against Saudi targets inside of Yemen, against Yemeni, as well as against U.S. targets. So it was aspirational. We saw that there was this mounting sort of drumbeat of interest in trying to get individuals to carry out attacks. That was the fragmentary information. And so in hindsight now, and 2020 hindsight always give you, gives you a much better opportunity to see it, we saw the plot was developing. But at the time, we did not know, in fact, that they were talking about sending Mr. Abdul Muttalib to the United States. Can I just one follow-up? Just your first recommendation is to assign responsibility <coughs> on all leads that are high priority. Um, and it just seems like that would be the basic premise of any intelligence system. It seems so fundamental. I'm sure people wonder, really, that's a reform we need? What we've done so far since 9-11 is to really help to distribute information throughout the community, increase capability throughout. There are a lot of different organizations involved. I think what we're trying to do is to make sure that as these threads develop, and there are so many of them, that it's clearly understood who has the lead on it. because. Most times, CIA, DHS, FBI, NCTC, and others are working it. What we want to do is to make sure that for each one of these threads, there's a lead, and they're going to make sure that it moves forward. Uh, Mr. Brennan, you, you mentioned um, the problems of intelligence sharing before 9-11. But after 9-11, when the 9-11 Commission report came out, it was all about connecting the dots. And at that time, there was a pledge by the intelligence community to do, to do better on connecting the dots. And I'm wondering why? From that stand, not from the pre-9/11, but from the post-9/11 Commission standpoint, why dots weren't connected? And when you say you're going to improve analysis, how is it going to happen this time when it didn't happen that time? Uh, second point first. Analysis has, in fact, improved steadily. As I said, we have an amazing track record here within the United States, the intelligence community across the board, as far as identifying these plots early, disrupting them, thwarting them, and preventing those types of attacks in every instance. So what we want to do is to make sure that we even raise that game even higher. As far as information sharing in those dots, in the past before 9-11, you had dots in separate databases that were separated from one another and were not connected from a network standpoint. Also, you had a husbanding of those dots by individual agencies and departments. We don't have that anymore. There's better interoperability. There's better accesses. More places have access to more of those dots that come in. And so that's the challenge, is making sure that we can leverage the access to those dots so we can bring it up and identify all of these threats.